impossible to miss the fact that the city of Philadelphia lives and breathes with the spirit of a man who many consider to be our most famous founding father, Benjamin Franklin. Now, one of his most famous sayings was, well done is better than well said. It's an adage that encapsulates the man whose common sense, down-to-earth pragmatism propelled him to accomplish a staggering amount of achievements in his action-packed lifetime. Ben Franklin was a leading author, political theorist, politician, printer, statesman, scientist, inventor, civic activist, and diplomat. We're here at Franklin Court. Let's go take a look. As a printer, Ben Franklin was extremely successful. He had learned the trade from his older brother and soon moved from Boston, where he was born, to Philadelphia, where he became a newspaper editor, printer, and merchant. It was here that he began to publish the Pennsylvania Gazette, a newspaper that became the most successful in all the colonies. He also published a wildly popular yearly almanac that he wrote under the pseudonym Richard Saunders. He called it Poor Richard's Almanac. As a scientist, Franklin took the world by storm, conducting experiments in electricity, what they called at that time, electrical fluid. Some of his experiments would become infamous. On a stormy June day in 1752, Ben Franklin, along with his son William, flew a kite with a wire poking out of it high in the Philadelphia skies. As the skies darkened and the kite's string bristled with electricity, Franklin brought his knuckles close to a brass key dangling from the end of the string. A spark leaped through the air, giving him a powerful jolt, thus proving that lightning, at the time a rather mysterious phenomenon, was simply electricity. This, along with other experiments with electricity, led to Franklin's invention of the lightning rod, a device that has protected untold numbers of buildings and lives to this very day. Ben Franklin was a prodigious inventor, inventing the Franklin stove, a urinary catheter, a glass harmonica, swim fins, and those famous bifocals. But the most amazing thing about Franklin is that for all his inventions, he never sought a patent. He wanted to give his inventions to the world freely. In his autobiography, he wrote, as we enjoy great advantages from the inventions of others, we should be glad of an opportunity to serve others by any invention of ours. And this we should do freely and generously. Franklin, like so many of our nation's greatest leaders, was motivated not out of fame or monetary gain, but service to others and the greater good. In 1764, Franklin was dispatched to England as an agent for the Pennsylvania colony to petition King George III to establish central British control of Pennsylvania away from its hereditary proprietors. In London, Franklin opposed the Stamp Act and took a principled stand against the Townsend Acts of 1767. His opposition to unjust taxation by the Crown spelled a, an end to his dream of a career in the British government and his alliance with the proponents of colonial independence. It also led to an irreconcilable break with his son William, who remained loyal to the crown. Franklin then began his long journey home. By the time he arrived back in Philadelphia on May 5th, the American Revolution had begun with fighting in Lexington and Concord. The New England militia had trapped the main British army in Boston. The Revolutionary War had officially begun. The Pennsylvania Assembly unanimously chose Franklin as their delegate to the Second Continental Congress. In 1776, he was a member of the Committee of Five that drafted the Declaration of Independence and made several small changes to Thomas Jefferson's draft. At the signing, he is quoted as having stated, we must all hang together, or assuredly, we shall all hang separately. Like the other advocates of republicanism, Franklin emphasized that the new republic could survive only if the people were virtuous in the sense of attention to civic duty and rejection of corruption. 
Indeed, all his life, he had been exploring the role of civic and personal virtue, as expressed in Poor Richard's aphorisms. On July 4th, 1776, Congress appointed a committee that included Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams to design the Great Seal of the United States. Now, each member of the committee proposed a unique design. Franklin's proposal featured the motto, Rebellion to Tyrants is Obedience to God, and it even featured a scene from the book of Exodus, complete with Moses, the pillar of fire, the Israelites, and King George portrayed as Pharaoh. At the Constitutional Convention in 1787, when the convention seemed headed for disaster due to an endless and rancorous debate, the elderly Franklin requested that each day's session begin with prayers. Franklin recalled the days of the Revolutionary War when the American leaders assembled in daily prayer seeking divine guidance from the Father of Lights. He then rhetorically asked, and have we now forgotten that powerful friend? Or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? Franklin died on April 17, 1790, at the age of 84 years old. It is said that approximately 20,000 people attended his funeral. Now, he's buried right here at the Christ Church Burial Ground in Philadelphia, and his grave has become a revered site visited by thousands of people annually. Now, if you look at his gravestone, you can see that it's become tradition to place or to toss over the fence pennies onto his grave marker in honor of the man whose oft-quoted phrase, a penny saved is a penny earned, has become a treasured motto. Of course, what people don't realize is the fact that when they place a penny on his grave and walk away, they're doing the exact opposite of what Franklin himself suggested. So to honor the man, I think I'll take my penny, place it right back into my pocket. But whatever you do with your penny, you really should take the time to come here to Philadelphia to pay your respects to the man that many historians hail as the very first American, a man of virtue, honor, strength of character, courage, and devotion to his country.